every painter knows how it feels when you get stuck. At least I do. And when you get stuck, it helps if you know a few things about composition, like this distinction. A composition is static if there is no suggestion of movement. The layout of the surface creates a calm image. A dynamic composition, on the other hand, is all about movement. There is still a clear underlying order in the image, but one that actually creates movement. The distinction between the two not only applies to the landscape, but also to still life and even abstract work. I did this painting of the sunset in 2019, and because I wanted to capture the stillness of the moment, I needed a static composition. Absence of movement is primarily created by dominant horizontals. There are hardly any slanting lines to be seen. In general, you can say that if the horizontals dominate, as well as the verticals for that matter, but they are barely present in my work, the composition will be static. Secondly, the layout is quite symmetrical, not only because of the reflection in the water, but also due to the clouds that catch the last light of the sun on the center axis. Symmetry means balance, and balance is by definition the absence of movement. The static composition type is also widely used in religious art, like, for example, in this work by Jan van Eyck, the Flemish early 15th century painter. Quite a hard transition, huh? I just wanted to check if you're still awake. What I'm trying to say is, you don't always need symmetry for a static composition. Works by 20th century Dutch painter Piet Mondrian are perfect examples of this concept. Lots of horizontals and verticals, but no symmetry. Let's go back to the Jan van Eyck painting. A century later, the Madonna is depicted like this. A striking difference, isn't it? The lively, informal character of the scene is not only achieved by the interaction between the figures, but also by the strong diagonals which create a sense of movement in this painting by the Italian Renaissance artist Raphael. The static quality of Van Eyck's painting has completely disappeared. And of course, landscape painters have often used this composition technique as well. Take Wijnand Nijen, a 19th century Dutch romantic painter. No verticals or horizontals in sight. If you want drama and action, a dynamic composition is the way to go. My own work always features a horizon, which provides stability, like in this painting. But except for the horizon, everything is tilted and even the beach pole isn't upright. So much for the theoretical part. The million dollar question here is of course, how does this help when I get stuck in my own painting process? Sometimes you get so caught up in the process of constantly making small choices, and that's what painting often is, that you lose sight of the big picture, sometimes even causing the clarity of the composition to suffer. In those cases, try asking yourself what is it again what I'm shooting for, movement and action, or rather stillness and balance. Once you've cleared that up, the choices usually follow naturally.
famous less is more rule from Bauhaus architect Mies van der Rohe is definitely subscribed by lots of painters as well, such as, again, Mondrian. And if you think this only applies to abstract painters, I beg to differ. Even more traditional painters like me can benefit a lot by keeping this rule in mind. So, if you're stuck, ask yourself which elements of my composition are not really necessary. And then get rid of them. Works like a charm. In a lot of landscape paintings, there's a clear point within the composition to which the painter wants to draw your attention to. For me, it's often the point where the dunes and the surf meet. There is one composition type, though, that has no such point whatsoever. This is the so-called overall composition, which has been widely used in the 20th century by painters such as Jackson Pollock, also known as Jack the Dripper. Contrary to the overall composition, a painting can also actually feature several focal points. Take this picture, for example. I took it a few years ago. Everything in it seems to point to the tip of the dunes. The clouds, the waterline and even the plane track in the sky. Unfortunately, the sunset appears on the far right side, causing the picture to feature two focal points fighting for the viewer's attention. Still, no man overboard. With Photoshop it's easy to move the sunset to the left and change the picture's focal point to the tip of the dunes. So, when you think your painting somehow looks wrong and you just can't figure out what it is, a simple focal point check might be the answer. Unlike what you might think this looks like, I'm not looking at my own face here. I generally try to avoid that as much as possible. No, I'm looking at the mirrored version of the painting I'm working on. You'll be surprised how easy it is to locate the weak spots in your composition with the help of a mirror. Somehow, the mirrored image gives you a fresh perspective. <laughs> 